determining the moment of inertia of the composite eye section. And uh, from there, we can begin to solve other problems. Okay. So let's go over to uh, the determination of the sectional properties of this eye section. Picking the, the penultimate beam, uh, you know that uh, we're going to have the section as this. Uh, let's look at the sections. All right. So I will apply the load, the HA load and the uh, HB load. Uh, well, I've been able to draw on the section of the bridge. You can look at the section. Uh, we are zooming a life load, pedestrian life load of five kilonewton per meter square. We have the HA load uh, at an eccentricity of uh, 200. Let's call it 200. So we have it here, uh, 200. Okay. We have it as 200. All right, so when we look at the board, we are going to see the sections have been caught. All right, so we can see the various sections. We have the eye sections. We have the composite section uh, for computer analysis. Uh, in the case of uh, we intend to design with uh, a computer using grillage, and uh, we probably have uh, the other one, which is the manual design, uh, designing it manually. Uh, we probably have the other section, which we use in designing it manually. You can see the other section, uh, the Institute's lab has been transformed using modular ratio of 0 0.86 uh, to transform it to uh, the precast section. So, have we gotten these sections? We have seen the loadings of the deck. We've seen uh, the point loads, the UDL. The next step we are going to do is we are going to take is to calculate the moment of inertia of the I section. And after we have done with calculating moment of inertia of the I section, we will calculate the moment of inertia of the composite section, uh, especially for manual design. We are going to do that. And uh, Next, we are going to also calculate the torsional inertia and the moment of inertia, torsional inertia of uh, the cross beam or the diaphragm. In this case, uh, we are going to have the diaphragm uh, at the support of the deck. We are going to have the diaphragm at the support of the deck. So we are going to have that. So let's go over to the next thing we have. Let's determine the moment of inertia of the I section that we have on the board. Now, the moment of inertia of this I section will be gotten using the parallel axis theorem. Uh, the section will be discretized into seven sections, like you can see uh, on the board. We are going to do that. It's going to be seven sections. Uh, we are going to get their various moment of inertia of each of those sections and we'll sum them. But first, we must get the centroid of this uh, I section. We'll get a centroid, which is the neutral axis of the eye section. So let's start, first of all, by determining the neutral axis of that eye section. And we'll continue from there. All right, looking at the sectional modulus, we've been able to calculate the moment of inertia of the I section and also the sectional modulus of the I section. 
now you can see that the section has been divided into seven sections. The areas of each of the sections have been taken. And uh, using the parallel axis theorem, we've been able to determine the moment of inertia of the I section. And uh, we can now proceed to determine the moment of inertia of the composite section. Okay? Now, you look at the sectional modulus of the I section. Uh, moment of initial, every other parameters have been gotten. Right. So now. Now, the next stage is the calculation of torsional initia of the I section. Now, when you look at the I section, you discover that we have been able to idealize it in such a manner as we have on the board. You can see that uh, the slant side of it uh, has a height of 23 mm. Uh, the top of the flange will have 204. And um, from the all right, now the next stage we are is the determination of the torsional inertia of the composite section. Now you can see from what we've done that the I section have been idealized and um, the size we have 204, 23 mm, 630, or 132 mm, and 231 mm. These are the actual sizes of the uh, uh, actual dimensions of this uh, I section, uh, the base of it, which we have 710 mm, the top is 460. All right, so we know this from our previous calculation now, but we are going to idealize it. In idealizing it, you can see that the shape is a trapezium, it's a trapezium. So the area of a trapezium is used to determine the area of uh, that particular chamfer side can see it. Uh, the area of the trapezium is 8165 mm square. Now we need to calculate the equivalent uh, rectangular depth of such area. If you do the equivalent rectangular depth of such area, you have it as 17.75 mm. 17.75 mm. So let's say approximately we're having it to be 18 mm. So the total depth of that rectangle is going to be, uh, instead of 23 mm, we are now having it as uh, 18 mm. So we're adding it up to uh, what we have, 204. If we add it up to 204, we're going to be having it as um, 204 plus 18, which is 222 mm. So we have it. 222 mm as the equivalent uh, depth of the of the rectangle. Now the composite uh, section, the institu slab. Of course, we know the thickness of the institu slab is 200 mm. Now we go to the bottom of this I section. Uh, we do the same thing. The 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 area of the trapezium of side 250 mm by 710 mm with height of 132 will give us an area of uh, 63,360 uh, mm square. Sorry, that is mm square. Equivalent depth becomes 89 mm. Now, the total depth of that section becomes 300, 320 mm. So, if we have that, we you can see from the diagram we've been able to redraw the shape. Of course, when these values are placed, you know that. Uh, uh, we are going to have uh, shape 3 to have a depth of about 678 mm. It becomes the, the depth of uh, shape 3. Now, the torsional initials and the parameters we are going to use to obtain them, you can see that uh, the formula for what we have on the formula there, the torsional parameters are there. Uh, we have it as a uh, torsional initial J is equal to K, D maximum. Uh, times b raised to the power 3. So uh, we'll look for k. The tables of k's are, are there. Uh, these are the values for the tables of k's. You can see the ratio of b maximum ratio b 
for 1, for 1 1.2, 1 1.5, 1.75, 2.0, 2.25, 2.5, 2.5, uh, we have uh, 3, we have 4, we have 5.0, we have 10, and uh, we equally have infinity. Of course, the values for infinity for k is uh, 0 0.333. Okay, so once the value is greater than 10, you of course, your k value becomes 0 0.333. Other values of k's are indicated on the table. Now, this is a standard table for determining the torsional stiffness of uh, uh, the beam. So, by interpolation, we can get the values of k1, k2, k3, and k4. Once the values of k1, k2, k3, and k4 are obtained, the next thing we are going to do is to plug in the formulas to calculate the total torsional inertia of the composite I section. So that we are going to do. Once we do that, you are going to see that the total value of the composite section will be calculated as thus. Uh, determining the moment of inertia of the composite eye section and uh, from there we can begin to solve other problems okay so let's go over to uh, the determination of the sectional properties of this eye section picking uh, the penultimate beam uh, you know that uh, we're going to have the section as this uh, let's look at the sections Right, so I will apply the load, the HA load, and the uh, HB load. Uh, well, I've been able to draw the section of the bridge. If you look at the section, uh, we are zooming a life load, pedestrian life load of five kilonewton per meter square. We have the HA load uh, at an eccentricity of uh, 200. Let's call it 200. We have it here. Uh, 200 okay we have it as 200 all right so when we look at the board we are going to see the sections have been caught all right, so we can see the various sections. We have the eye sections. We have the composite section uh, for computer analysis. Uh, in the case of uh, for intent to design with uh, a computer using grillage, and uh, we probably have uh, the other one, which is the manual design, uh, designing it manually. Uh, we probably have the other section which we use in designing it manually. You can see the other section, uh, the Institute lab has been transformed using modular ratio of 0 0.86 uh, to transform it to uh, the precast section. So, having gotten these sections, we have seen the loadings of the deck, we've seen uh, the point loads, the UDL. The next step we are going to do is we are going to take is to calculate the moment of inertia of the I section. And after we have done with calculating the moment of inertia of the I section, we will calculate the moment of inertia of the composite section, especially for manual design. We are going to do that. And uh, next, we are going to also calculate the torsional inertia and the moment of inertia, torsional inertia of uh, the cross beam or the diaphragm. In this case, uh, we are going to have the diaphragm uh, at the support of the deck. We are going to have the diaphragm at the support of the deck. So we are going to have that. So let's go over to the next thing we have. Let's determine the moment of inertia of the I section. 
data we have on the board. Now, a moment of initial of this I section will be gotten using the parallel axis theorem. Uh, the section will be discretizing to seven sections, like you can see uh, on the board. We are going to do that. It's going to be seven sections. Uh, we are going to get their various moment of inertia of each of those sections and we'll sum them. But first, we must get the centroid of this uh, I section. We'll get the centroid, which is the neutral axis of the I section. So let's start first of all by determining the neutral axis of that I section. Um, we'll continue from there. All right, looking at the sectional modulus, we've been able to calculate the moment of inertia of the I section and also the sectional modulus of the I section. Now you can see that the section has been divided into seven sections. The areas of each of the sections have been taken. And uh, using the parallel axis theorem, we've been able to determine the moment of inertia of the I section. And uh, we cannot proceed to determine the moment of inertia of the composite section okay now you look at the sectional modulus of the i section uh moment of inertia every other parameters have been gotten All right, so now the next stage is the calculation of torsional. Now, the next stage is the calculation of torsional initial of the I section. Now, when you look at the I section, you discover that we have been able to idealize it in such a manner as we have on the board. You can see that uh, the slant side of it uh, has a height of 23 mm. Uh, the top of the flange will have 204 and um, from the we have six <laughs> all right now we the composite section we all right now the next stage we are is the determination of the torsional initial of the composite section now you can see from what we've done that the i section have been idealized and um, the size we have 204 23 mm 630 or 132 mm and 231 mm these are the actual sizes of uh, uh, actual dimensions of this i section at the base of it, which we have 710 mm, the top is 460. All right, so we know this from our previous calculation now, but we are going to idealize it. In idealizing it, you can see that the shape is a trapezium, it's a trapezium. So the area of a trapezium is used to determine the area of uh, that particular chamfer side. You can see it 
uh, the area of the trapezium is 8165 mm square. Now we need to calculate the equivalent uh, rectangular depth of such area. If you do the equivalent rectangular depth of such area, you will have it as 17.75 mm. 17.75 mm. So let's say approximately we're having it to be 18 mm. So the total depth of that rectangle is going to be, uh, instead of 23 mm, we are now having it as uh, 18 mm. So we're adding it up to uh, what we have, 204. If we add it up to 204, we're going to be having it as uh, 204 plus 18, which is 222 mm. So we have it 222 mm as the equivalent uh, depth of the of the rectangle. Now the composite uh, section, the institute slab. Of course, we know the thickness of the institute slab is 200 mm. Now we go to the bottom of this I section. Uh, we do the same thing. The, the the area of the trapezium of side 250 mm by 710 mm with height of 132 will give us an area of uh, 63,360 uh, mm square. Sorry, that is mm square. Equivalent depth becomes 89 mm. Now the total depth of that section becomes 300, 320 mm. So if we have that, we you can see from the diagram we've been able to redraw the shape. Of course, when these values are placed, you know that. Uh, uh, we are going to have uh, shape 3 to have a depth of about 678 mm. It becomes the, the depth of uh, shape 3. Now, the torsional initials and the parameters we are going to use to obtain them, you can see that uh, the formula for what we have on the formula there, the torsional parameters are there. Uh, we have it as a uh, torsional initial J is equal to K, D maximum. Uh, times b raised to the power 3. So uh, we'll look for k. The tables of k's are, are there. Uh, these are the values for the tables of k's. You can see the ratio of b maximum ratio b for 1, for 1 1.2, 1.5, 1.75, 2.0, 2.25, 2.5. Uh, we have uh, 3, we have 4. We have 5.0, we have 10, and uh, we probably have infinity. Of course, the values for infinity for k is uh, 0 0.333, okay? So once the value is greater than 10, you, of course, your k value becomes 0 0.333. Other values of k's are indicated on the table. Now, this is the standard table for determining the torsional stiffness of uh, uh, the beam. So for our interpolation, we can get the values of K1, K2, K3, and K4. Once the values of K1, K2, K3, and K4 are obtained, the next thing we are going to do is to plug in the formulas to calculate the total torsional initia of the composite I section. So that we are going to do. Once we do that, you are going to see that the total value of the Composite section will be calculated as thus. Now, the torsional initia of that particular section has been calculated. Torsional initia due to portion 1, 2, 3, 4 have been calculated. You can see it on the board. We have the total torsional initia 
to be uh, 15949 uh, 15949344960.768. Okay. Now, the next thing we are going to be doing is the determination of the sectional properties of the cross beam or diaphragm. Now, if we do that, you we are assuming um, a diaphragm of a depth of uh, 100, 1000 mm, uh, including the top slab, we'll be having it as 1200 mm depth. Uh, we're going to determine the centroid. Well, first of all, the effective span of this uh, uh, diaphragm across beam is gotten by multiplying 0 0.5 times the effective width. Of course, you know the span is 20 meters, so the effective width is 10 meters for the flange. But due to the fact that we have this flange on both sides, of the deck that is when you are looking at it from the longitudinal direction uh, leaving it at that value of 0 0.5 times 20 which is 10 means we are replicating it the second time and uh, what we need to do we have to multiply it by 0 0.5 to reduce the effect of having the slab uh, the torsion initial of the slab being doubled all right, so multiplying it by 0 0.5 will reduce it on the other direction. Now, the centroid of this shape has been gotten to be 906.777 mm. The moment of inertia, the moment of inertia is I1 plus A1 plus Y, Y1 prime square plus I2 plus A2 plus Y2 prime square okay now the moment of inertia we've gotten it everything we have it on the board as 15883727294.16 mm raised to power 4 so that is the moment of inertia of this cross beam now we have to get the uh, torsional inertia of this beam uh, using the same principle uh, St. Venant's torsion, uh, we have it as thus on the board. Uh, the centroid has been determined. Uh, so we follow the same principle. We can have the K values. Of course, you can see 5,000 5, over 225, which is more than 10. So 0 0.33 is OK. Uh, K2 for 2.105. Of course, through interpolation, the values can be gotten to be 0 0.234 as the value. By the time we do this calculation, plugging it into the formula, we're going to have the total torsional inertia of this cross beam or diaphragm to be 38.398.218.750 and then raised to power 4. All right, so having gotten this, we have been able to determine all the necessary properties that are needed, most especially for the manual calculation of uh, loads for this uh, bridge. Okay, uh, but also remember that uh, we are not working on, uh, we still have two sections to calculate their properties uh, where we Whenever we intend to design this bridge superstructure using the grillage method, uh, you must understand that the cross beam uh, effective span will no longer be what it is as it is now. Uh, but we'll come to that when we begin to deal with the grillage method. Okay? So uh, if that is the case, what it means is that uh, if you are dealing with grillage, the cross beam uh, section will be quite different from what we're having. Most importantly, uh, the effective flange width will be changing. Okay, so uh, these are what we're going to have. So, and uh, remember that the cross 
beam in the village is going to also are also going to be determining the properties of the internal cross beam of the grillage uh, uh, the deck. So, but we are not going into grillage analysis. We want to calculate the load on this bridge manually using uh, the various methods available. So, having gotten this property, we cannot proceed in to calculating the uh, bending moment shear force of the longitudinal eye section. And also, we can also proceed to determine the, the, that of also the cross beams, okay? So quickly, So we are going to be looking at um, the edge beam, uh, determining the, the sectional property of the edge beam. Uh, this is more important uh, when we want to design using the method of grillage. Uh, we're going to be seeing the importance of uh, the sectional property of this edge beam. Uh, you know that the neutral axis of the edge beam will be quite different from that of uh, the pendant to mid beam. So we are going to be seeing that. You can see the uh, modular ratio has been used to transform the section. Uh, you can see that um, uh, the properties of this uh, edge beam, uh, 0 0.86 times 1.5, uh, it gives us 1.29. Uh, why the bottom, which is the slab, the deck slab is um, 0 0.86 times um, uh, the total width, which is uh, 1.225 plus 0 0.6. If we do that, we're going to have 1.5.